Good day fish tankers. I hope all your fish are swimming and your aquariums are looking great. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite plants or groups of plants and that's a of course these guys. Uh, this is a Cryptocorini wentai. I'm going to talk about a whole group of Cryptocorini plants. I'm not species specific and they come in a wide variety of different kinds and different colors and it's considered a easier plant. They have lower light requirements or they have medium light requirements to be specific. They do not require CO2. It's considered a low tech plant. But are they really an easy plant? Stick around and find out. Okay guys, first things first. What do we do with them? How do we plant them? They are rooted plants as I've said. And they usually come in these little pots packed in the rock wool. What's nice about Epic Aquatics is they've got that, uh, they've got that uh, label, Cryptocorini Wentai. I've got Cryptocorini Undulata, red and green. I've got some Cryptocorini Axel Rody in my tanks and Cryptocorini Balancé. But uh, don't ask me, except for Balancé, that's very distinctive, which are which. But you can see lighter demand low, CO2 low. That's something nice about the way they package their product, not sponsored once again. Now, the thing is, some people just push these pots into the substrate. Now, the roots will find their way eventually. I see Aquarium Co-op has got a product, Easy Planter, where this goes in. But I'm not a fan of that. This is packaging of the old rock wool. As it gets older, it starts to disintegrate. So I would always gently pull it out and loosen the rock wool from the roots. Just get rid of it as much as you can. Get rid of the rock wool because it disintegrates and it can sometimes start irritating the gills of a fish without you knowing it. And there you see it's got a root system. I'm just quickly going to wash it off under the tap just to get the last bit free. Okay guys, so here we go. I've got my planting tongs with me today. Yay! Now you'll see it's a rooted plant, but it will also from that stronger root that you see there. Over time it, for it forms a kind of a rhizome that goes under the substrate and you just simply stick it into the substrate like that a little bit higher up in that and there you go i'm gonna use my hand there's sometimes a planting tongue just cannot do what your hand can do and there i'm just gonna stick it in there and those roots will find their way and there you see your little plant now where do you plant it because let's look at the next thing about these plants and that's their light requirements they have medium light or lower light requirements but not as low as let's say anubias for instance anubias i like to plant in the more shady areas as long as there's still a bit of light on them these i'll plant in full light i'll plant it uh, as you can see the valles near is covering a lot of a surface here so there is some shade anyway but i'll definitely use more of the brighter areas not the brightest but where it gets a good amount of light because as you can see if i can move a camera around here to the corner you see they're right in the corner i'm going to zoom in on it now and just there, those, those, those crypts you see there in the corner, that's got that very nicely textured, thin, uh, ribbon-like leaves. Those are Cryptocorini balancei. And you can see they're curling more than they should. And that is because they are not getting all the light that they should. Because as I zoom out, you can see there's a lot of Valesneria that's growing across the surface. And I trim these uh, down quite regularly, but they never stay down. And I don't want to hurt the old such a nice jungle. But that over there in the corner 
where the grip by Lanze sits is not the best spot for the grip. You can see they're just not having good enough light. So guys, right there in front of us, we've got a very nice view of a crypt. That's Cryptocorani Wentii or Cryptocorani, maybe it's Undulata. I'm not sure. I think it's a Wentii. But you can see it's growing very nicely. It's formed a nice rosette of leaves. It's got a nice green color. Food. All plants need food. So besides the light, if we've got the light thing sorted, what do they eat? They are root feeders. So they're not really big on liquid fertilizer they'll use some of it but they do feed heavily from the roots and here as you already know by now it's a deep dirted substrate so they take a while and once the roots goes deep and it hits that soil mixture at the bottom that's when they explode and they start growing so the substrate must have some food in it for them maybe if it's a very settled tank and it's only sand or gravel there'll be enough fish poop and mulm in the substrate and they can survive of that but they won't never really do well so you can either use aqua swell there are various kinds on the market you can use a dirted substrate like mine or else you can use root, root tabs but i do find that they do very well on these dirted substrates and on the aqua soils i've tried them with root tabs they don't quite do as well so that is your main thing you need medium light it doesn't need to be high-tech light, the most expensive light, but they do also need something for their roots to feed on. Then, they, as far as growth is concerned, they're not the fastest growing plant out there. They're not quite as slow as Anubias, but they are still slow. So if you look at it here, where I've just planted that new crypt, I'm going to do maintenance on this tank on this coming weekend, and if you see the Vallis Neria, that's the dominant plant here. They took over the Amazon swords already. I'm fine with that. But where my crypts sit here in front of a tank, I'm going to take those runners that you see there of the Vallis Neria popping up. I'm just going to pinch those off and pull those little plants out and throw them on the compost heap. I'm not going to let these guys overgrow the crypts because if I just let the Vallis Neria grow into the front of a tank, they are going to take the lion's share of the nutrients and they are simply going to outgrow and outcompete the crypts. So a heavily competing plant, just make sure that, they, that there's a spot for your crypts and they should be fine. Here we are at one of my other aquariums and you can see the crypts all growing here towards the front. Some of them are Axel Rowdy, some of them are Undulata. As I've said, I'm not very species specific with these guys. But as I've said, they grow slowly, not as slow as Anubia, so at least they're faster than that. And how do they procreate? Now with stem plants, you can just cut off a stem and plant them. With Alisneria, they send those runners over the substrate. With these guys, they, their roots form a sort of a rhizome as well underneath the substrate. And then they have sort of runners popping out from there, but not over the substrate, underneath the substrate. And I'm going to focus in, if I can, there, on that little plant there. You can see there, against the glass, you can see that rhizome popping up there with a sort of a runner, and then the leaf bores through the substrate to the top. If I go a little bit further down the tank, there, we can see there's a whole group of them. You can see against the glass, popping up like that. So they slowly creep over the substrate and they start populating the aquarium. You've got to protect them against the faster moving plants and them. But it's very nice in the sense that you don't have to worry about the crypts completely overrunning everything else. They hardly ever need trimming. You know, and then you can trim away a dead leaf if it bothers you. And it's just to me a very beautiful plant with lots of varieties, lots of colors and except for their tendency to melt they don't really they don't really require a lot of expert care in fertilization what i would say is keep your water parameters constant with them and keep your fertilization constant i as long as i have a nutritious substrate that would be okay if you do fertilizer like i occasionally do for my other plants then just keep it constant i've once changed fertilizer brands and changed to a daily 
fertilizer, uh, fertilization regimen, and then the leaves started melting again. And that, that shows you the crypts don't like any changes. So pick, pick a lane and stick, it, stick with it with them. Don't chop and change of your fertilization if you're going to use any column, water column fertilization, and they will thank you for it. Here is the number one drawback, the number one pain in the what's name about crypts, and that's called crypt melt. Now you can see there, these crypts have been planted a week ago. They looked very nice coming out of a store, and now we have some of those leaves simply disintegrating. That's why it's called crypt melt, just falling apart and rotting away. We can see in this little plant over here, it's a leaf there at the back. You can see it's slowly turning to mush, as well as the one in front. Now why do they do that? They do that because they are grown immersed, in other words, above the water in a damp environment. Now they're underwater and they have to adjust, so the leaves that are used to being above water are dying off. Now, other plants do that as well. Another thing about crypts is they don't like to be moved and they don't like changes in the environment. So if you pull them out and you move them, they might do this as well. Also, if you change something drastically in the tank, sometimes I found even adding new kinds of fertilizer, then this may happen as well. But it's not the end of the world because even if you look there, right there by the base of that plant, there's a tiny little new leaves coming out right next to it through the rhizome. So there's always new leaves coming out and then it recovers and it grows into a proper plant. So don't throw it away, just leave it and be patient. It recovers and then your troubles are something of the past. But be mindful, they don't like to be moved, so think before you plant them. So here you see is there are some more crypts in this little nano tank in the foreground coming along nicely. What can I say about the differences that I observe in tank size? They definitely grow bigger in the medium to large tanks. I find in the small nano tanks they sort of stay short. They grow, they also slowly spread around the tank, but they, they tend to sort of bonsai, they tend to sort of stay shorter. Well that's it for me with uh, Cryptocorionis. Tell me what your experience uh, has been with this group of plants. And if you liked the video, if you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up. I would appreciate you considering to subscribe. And until I see you again, keep taking good care of those domestic denizens of the deep.